Hi guys. Today we'll be on lesson eight, speaking and listening about the nervous system and the brain. Our primary focus today is to be able to, to describe the relationship between the nervous system and the brain using language that pertains to sequence and cause effect. The following are core vocabulary words that are used in this lesson. You're not expected to be able to use these words immediately, but with repeated exposure throughout the lessons, hopefully you'll acquire a good understanding of most of the words. You may wish to keep these in a unit dictionary notebook along with definitions, sentences, and or other writing exercises using these vocabulary words. As always, anytime we have a question or you need to stop and write something down, pause the video and then come back when you're ready. Our first phrase here is brainstem. Brainstem is the central trunk of the human brain that continues down to the spinal cord. Next, we have hemispheres. Hemispheres are halves of a sphere. sphere. Halves of earth or halves of the cerebrum. We'll talk more about that today. Next, we have the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the dominant part of the human brain found in the front of the skull that has two sections and is responsible for regulating most thought processes and voluntary actions in the body. Cerebellum. The cerebellum is the part of the human brain that is found at the back and bottom of the skull and that helps control muscle activity. Then finally we have accurate. Accurate means careful or free of mistakes or errors. Now, remember that the human body systems are varied and they all are interconnected. Can anybody share what they've learned in the previous lesson about how the nervous system is interconnected with the other human body systems? Remember to pause to answer. During today's read aloud, listen carefully to learn more about the nervous system, the different parts of the brain, and the brain's functions as the command center in the central nervous system. Hi, I've got lots of fascinating facts to share with you today, so I'm hoping that my brain is in good working order. There's a lot to remember. Raise your hand if you have a brain. Oof. I'm glad all hands went up. Yes, of course you have a brain. All vertebrates have brains. Who remembers what else all vertebrates have? Right, a backbone. You know that you have a backbone. You've been testing out those wonderful, flexible spines that support your bodies and protect your spinal cords. Quick check. Remember to pause the video to answer this after I ask the question. How would your life be different if you didn't have a backbone? Ah, so look here on the screen, and you can see here how this little part comes down. You've learned that your nervous system is a complex network with two essential organs, your spinal cord and your brain. Your spinal cord is connected to your brain by the brain stem, the central trunk of the brain. Your brain itself is very soft, but it is well protected by your cranium or brain case. This strong eggshell shaped part of your skull is formed from eight interlocking bones wedged together like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Inside your skull, your brain floats in a clear liquid that cushions it and keeps it from banging against your skull. Your brain is covered in grooves and folds, resembling a huge walnut, about the size of a cantaloupe or a grapefruit. This jelly-like pinkish-gray blob has blood vessels running all through its wrinkled mass. They carry oxygen, water, and other important nutrients to the brain. Quick check. Why does our brain float in a clear liquid? 
And what could happen to our brains if that liquid wasn't there? Pause the video to answer those questions. The brain, when fully grown, weighs about three pounds. That may seem pretty small and light for such a big body, but humans have larger brains than animals when compared with their body size. So even though the brains of elephants and whales are actually larger than human brains, their, their brains are smaller than ours compared with the enormous size of their bodies. There are three main sections of the brain. They are the brain stem, down here towards the bottom, the cerebrum and cerebral cortex, and the cerebellum. Each part of the brain has an important function. Your brain stem, about as thick as your thumb, is approximately three inches long. It helps to relay messages between your brain and spinal cord. The bottom third of your brain stem, the part that blends into the top of your spinal cord, is called the medulla. The medulla is responsible for many of your body's involuntary or automatic muscle movements. The medulla makes sure that your lungs are receiving oxygen by controlling your breathing and making sure your heart is beating. The medulla helps you swallow and break down the food in your digestive system. So the nervous system and the digestive system are interconnected. The medulla controls your coughs and sneezes and hiccups, as well as your sleeping and dreaming. It also controls the movement of your head and neck. Quick check. What would happen if you didn't have a medulla? Pause the video to answer. The cerebrum is the largest part of your brain, filling the whole upper part of your skull. Language, memory, thought, sensations, and decision-making are housed in your cerebrum. Your cerebrum is the thinking brain, and part of the cerebrum that does most of the thinking is called the cerebral cortex. Your cortex is the deeply wrinkled outer surface of the cerebrum. The more that it is used, the thicker it becomes. In other words, people who use their brains to think a lot develop the thicker cortexes. Do you think your cortex is getting any thicker? It is. You're learning a lot each day. Let's look more closely at the cerebrum. The cerebrum is divided into two halves, or hemispheres. The two hemispheres of the brain, the, less, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, are linked to one another by thick nerve fibers. Interestingly, the nerves that connect your cerebrum to the rest of your body cross over to the opposite side as they enter your brain. This, this means that each hemisphere largely controls the muscles of the opposite side of the body. Place your left hand on your head and wave your right arm. The left side of your cerebrum controls muscles on the right side of your body. Now. Place your right hand on your head and wave your left arm. The right side of your cerebrum controls muscles on the left side of your body. One hemisphere is more developed than the others in most people. If you use the right side of your body more, that is, you kick with your right foot and you hold your pencil in your right hand, the left hemisphere is dominant or in control. It is the left hemisphere that is mostly associated with language, math, and reading. If, however, you use the left side of your body more, that is, you kick with your left foot, you hold your pencil in your left hand, the right hemisphere is dominant. The right hemisphere is mostly associated with imagination, music, and shapes. So quick check. Which hemisphere of your brain do you think is more dominant? Pause the video to answer that.
The third part of the brain, in addition to the brain stem and the cere- cerebrum, is called the cerebellum, meaning little brain. Tucked under your cerebrum, in the back of your brain, the cerebellum resembles your cerebrum with two hemispheres of its own. Your cerebellum is the control center for balance and coordination. It is constantly adjusting the way your body moves. As you practice any physical activity, such as dancing, your cerebellum receives messages about your body's actions and positions. It sends commands back to your muscles, adjusting your movements. As your cerebellum gradually becomes more accurate in its corrections, you begin to notice improvements in your dancing or whatever activity you're trying to perfect. For example, if you have learned to ride a bike, chances are you didn't master it all at once. It took practice. Your cerebellum was in charge of your balance and coordination, making small adjustments with each improvement until you could pedal quickly and furiously on your own without even thinking about it. Let's try an experiment to demonstrate what the cerebellum does. Close your eyes and reach your arms out to your sides so your body makes the shape of a T. Slowly bring your arms forward, touching the fingertips together. You may open your eyes now. Was that easy for you? Your cerebellum coordinated your movements for you. If you damaged your cerebellum, you would not be able to do this simple exercise. No matter how hard you tried, your hands would jerk around without any control. So quick check. How would your life be different without a cerebellum? Pause the video to answer that. Now, let's put all the parts of your brain together. Look at this picture of the brain. See if you can identify the three parts, the brain stem, the cerebrum, and the cerebellum. I'm going to ask you three riddles to test your knowledge and see how well your brain is working. Ready? I am the largest part of the brain divided, divided into two hemispheres. I am sometimes called the thinking brain. What am I? Pause the video to answer. Next riddle. I am only three inches long, but without me, the spinal cord would not be connected to the brain. One of my parts is called the medulla. What am I? Pause the video to answer. Last riddle. I look a lot like the cerebrum with two hemispheres of my own, but I am much smaller. Without me, you would not be able to balance on one leg. What am I? Pause the video to answer. Great job, everyone. Your brain is not very big, and yet it is the most more powerful than the strongest computer ever created. All other systems of the body are dependent upon this complex three-pound organ that lives inside your skull. Your brain is the center of your memory, thoughts, and feelings. Your brain is in command of your whole body. When your brain stops working, the rest of your body will stop working as well. Well, I think I remembered everything I wanted to tell you today. Next time, we'll look inside your skull some more to see what else is tucked away within those bones in addition to the brain. See you then! Now you will have some questions possibly from your teacher. Remember, as always, you can rewatch the video to help find those answers if you need. Otherwise, I hope you've learned something good today.